Hey yeah, and welcome to Making. This is a very special episode for two reasons. One, I'm sharing files for you to follow along with, and two, it's a collaboration with another YouTube channel, NJM Photo. A while back I made a tutorial showing how to use 3D layers with fractal noise to create a briar Statch nebula, and a user in Star Trek fan Millennium clearly didn't think much of it. I was more interested in showing the techniques than faithfully recreating the look but I had been thinking of revisiting the briar patch. That's when YouTube's algorithm showed me NJM Photo's channel and the astounding work he's been doing with motion control. Motion control is a technique where you can program a camera's mount to repeat movements. This allows you to shoot multiple passes. One for lights, one without lights as a beauty pass, and one with a background set so you can key the model. It's really useful, especially for that key pass, as it means you don't have to deal with spill. And yes, I am planning a VFX history episode all about motion control. NJM Photo, or Nick to his email acquaintances, uses what I am going to describe as prosumer equipment, and has a video talking through his setup. The costs for these tools are not impulse buy, but his results are astounding. Actually, if you think these costs are impulse buy affordable, my Kofi account is all set up and waiting for you. Which reminds me a massive thank you to Mint who bought me a coffee for my TGN Transporter tutorial, and to another supporter who I think wishes to remain anonymous. Thank you both for the coffees. Anonymous supporter, if you'd like a shout out, please message me on Kofi. Anyway, back to the story. I reached out to Nick and we came up with a plan. Let's create a story set in the Briar Patch. I put together a list of all the shots of the Enterprise in Insurrection, and we use that to map out a storyboard. Some of the shots match shots Nick had already done, so that saved a little bit of time. But not as much as each shot requires camera angles and lighting and long exposures. Nick delivered all the shots pre-keyed except for the one set we named Shot 3, and that's the one we'll be using here to recreate part of the Briar Patch. You can see the full sequence over on NJM's Photos channel, links are all in the description. I decided I didn't want to recreate the nebula exactly. If I'd wanted to, it's much simpler to use a content-aware fill to paint out the Enterprise, and this video is meant to showcase different techniques. I went to pexels.com and searched for videos with the tag Ink in Water, and wow, there's some incredible free resources there, definitely worth checking out. I had planned to dig out my old fish tank to do some cloud tank stuff, but Pexels had way better footage. Hashtag not an ad. So once you've downloaded all the footage files, warning it's almost a gigabyte of data, and you've grabbed some cool looking smoke and ink shots and some still images of clouds, it's time to jump into After Effects. I'm going to start by dragging the blue pass onto a new comp button. That creates me a new comp with the frame size, frame rate and duration of the footage. And scrubbing the timeline, you can see Nick's model appears to move towards the camera and looks like he has an extra motor on the model turning it. Very cool. Now the blue is a little dim. Normally I would go into effects and presets and search for key light, then apply the preset key light plus key cleaner plus advanced spill suppressor, and then select a blue from the background. But if I do that, I've lost the nacelles. Instead, after some experimentation, I found the best result for this shot was using the roto brush. Select it from the top bar, then double click on the layer, and in the new window, draw around the Enterprise. Then, holding down the Alt key, I'll just click and draw again for any bits rotor brush included that I don't want. Then, when you think it's right, preview the shot, stopping the preview to correct any issues. That gets us a nice, solid matte. When the preview is complete, click the freeze button to lock in the rotor brush, and wait again. When it's done, close the window to return to the comp. And there's our cutout. Hit enter and rename this to matte, and lock the layer and turn it off. Now, drag in the beauty pass. Nick has already done a great job lining up the timing of each shot, so we don't have to worry about that. Instead, using the track mat drop down, I'll select a matte layer and leave it as alpha matte. And that's a lovely light shining on the model. That's why the beauty pass is separate from the key pass. Drag in the lighting pass next, 
and this time we're not going to use the mat. There are some glows outside the edge of the model that is worth keeping. Instead, go to Effect, Color Correction, Levels, and just drag the sliders until we get a properly black black. And we can't make out the body at all. I may have mentioned recently that I got a chance to speak to Dan Curry, Senior VFX Supervisor for all Star Trek The Next Generation through Enterprise. He told me that when shooting the models, each type of light had its own lighting pass, so they could use different filters and different exposures, so the windows would pop more. That sort of thing. I can't do that here, but what I can do is use a quick mask on the nacelles, so I can treat those differently. On frame 1, I'll just draw a mask using the pen tool, then I'll hit MM to expose the mask properties and set a keyframe for mask path. I'll move forward a couple of seconds and make some adjustments to keep the nacelles in the mask. And I'll repeat that to the end. With the layer selected, I'll go to Edit, Duplicate, and I'll rename the top layer nacelles and the bottom copy windows. And using the mask drop down on the windows layer, I'll set the mask to subtract. On the nacelles layer, I'm just going to reset the levels effect and redo it to show off the nacelles a bit better. Then I'll go to Effect, Stylize, Glow. And I'll up the glow radius to 50, so we get more of that glowiness. Let's see what that gives us. Now I want to put this in 3D space so that when I add smoke and clouds it will appear the Enterprise is passing through them. So lock the layers and unlock the matte layer. Then turn off Rotor Brush and go to Window Tracker and select Track Camera. After Effects will now analyse the camera move and create a virtual camera to match. Incidentally, Aran Stern recently posted a video showing how to enhance a camera tracker's accuracy. I probably should have used this here, but this video is already going to be pretty long. When the tracking is complete, if I select one of the tracking markers, right click and choose Create Solid and Camera, then scale up the solid a bunch, you can see After Effects has interpreted correctly that the camera is moving, which is wrong for our needs. We need the camera to think it is static and the model is moving. But I can parent 3D layers to the camera, so any layer parented to the camera will appear static, and any 3D layer not parented will move relative to the camera. Bear with me. Delete the camera and solid for the moment. Then with the camera tracker effect selected, find three points on the Enterprise that are level with the saucer. Right click and choose Set Ground Plane and Origin. Then right click again and choose Create Null and Camera. Rename Track Null 1 to Ground. And then I have the normalized script from Workbench.tv. It's well worth getting, it's free and reduces the distances camera tracker makes to something manageable. I found this image online of the Enterprise E from the top and sides, and I'll add it and mask off the top. Then I'll make it 3D and parent it to the null layer to help me line it up in 3D space. There we go, it's never going to be perfect, but now I have a 3D layer in the shape of the Enterprise. At about the four second mark, I'm going to add in the first of my clouds. And I'll make it 3D and parent it to the ground null again.
Then, once it's positioned in front of the Enterprise, I'll parent it to the camera instead. And look at that! The Enterprise now appears to be passing through the cloud. To make this viable, we need to duplicate our cloud layer, our 2D plan of the ship and our camera, and then right click on this collection and choose Precompose. On the clouds layer, hit S to expose the scale properties and scale it up until it fills the screen. Then go to Effect, Generate, Fill, and set the color to black. Then on the plan layer, add another fill and set the color to white. So now we have a Luma mat we can use. Close this precomp and return to our blue comp as it's called. Drag the precomp to the bottom of the comp and turn it off. Turn off the plan layer or delete it. Then on the cloud layer, set its track mat to our precomp. And use the squares next to it and set it to Luma mat inverted. And on the precomp, go to effect, blur and sharpen. Fastbox Blur, and set the value to around 20. The cutout isn't perfect, but we also have the blue sky to take care of. Double click on the layer, and draw a mask to cut out the cloud. And now we'll use the key light preset. Then go to Effect, Color Correction, Tritone, and set it to some colors you think are right for the briar patch. And when you're happy, duplicate the layer and drag the copy below our beauty pass and remove its track mat. But to be a bit extra, you could also go to Effect, Distort, Twirl, and keyframe the amount to create a displacement type effect as the Enterprise passes through it. For the background, it's really just a case of adding some cloud pictures, applying some color effects, and keyframing distortions and movement. Leaving these as 2D layers helps sell the size of space, a bit like when you look at clouds behind houses while traveling, they appear to stay in the same spot. You want to fill the space and have it look exotic, but not enough that you're more drawn to the background than the model. Adding my quick cheats template at the end also helps sell the result too. And that's it! You know, just add creativity. But those are the tricks at least. Huge thank you to NJM Photo for responding to my idea. We've got another project we're talking about, so I hope that comes off. You can watch the full sequence adventure video thing on NJM Photo's channel. And if you have any ideas or want more details or questions about a specific shot in the final video, then post in the comments below. And if you're a fan of Star Trek, I've ended up making so many Trek-related tutorials that you can check them out on this playlist.